I'm going to do a quick update. This is on the 50cc um, four wheeler, the little Chinese four wheeler. Um, and I'm also going to do a, a, a quick video on a oil change on the Kawasaki Bayou 220. Um, so here's where I'm at so far. Um, got the new piston in. Looks pretty good. I already put the uh, the lower oil ring in there. Um, there's two smaller ones that go on there also. Um, Okay, so we have all these different rings, and you can see these these two right here are really small, are really thin. These are going to be the oil seal rings. They're going to go on this bottom one, both of these, one on top, one on the bottom, and then these um, are your compress compression uh, rings. Um, there's two different colors, and let's see if we can get this to pick up. Um, yeah, you can kind of tell that this one's black, and then the, this one's also black, but it has like a, a silvery kind of ring on the outside of it. So um, this is going to be your top one. This is going to be the bottom one. Um, there are. Let me get this to focus in. There's numbers on there. There's only on, on one side of them. And that, those numbers also face up on the piston like this. Um, so you got this one. This is going to be the middle ring. This one's going to be the top ring. I still need to set my end gap. And that's kind of, I'm at a standstill right now. I need to get a, a, a cylinder home for this. Um, this one's really pretty nice. Um, I mean, there's no really major scarring or anything like that in there. No big scratches, nothing you catch your finger on. It's real smooth. But um, with this new, with the new rings and everything, I want to make sure that I get a good cross hatch going in there so these uh, rings can see in really well. Um, I looked all over the place and. Um, uh, you can rent them. You can rent a normal cylinder home, or uh, you know where they have the loan out at your local uh, automotive store. But they don't have one this small. Um, this is about one and an eighth, so almost two inches wide, and they start at two inches. Um, I did notice that they're. Uh, brake cylinder homes would be perfect because they they go up to two inches which is right there um, but they don't have any of those for rent you actually have to buy those so I need to go to good old Harbor Freight they got one on sale for $7.99 um, and then I'll do that I'll try and make a video of it it's kind of interesting to see but anyways um, so I'll do that and then once I do that, I'll set my end gap with these. And I had a, a small doodling over here, trying to figure out which one is which. But from uh, from what I can tell, my top ring needs to have uh, seven thousandths of an inch, and then my middle ring needs to be nine. So, um, like I said, I need to. I need to hone it out before I do. It shouldn't change. It shouldn't change at all. But just want to make sure. Um, so I, I did that. I uh, cleaned out the carburetor. It was it was pretty dirty with some funky stuff inside. Um, I did the. Uh, let me show you this. I did a port match on the. Uh, on the carburetor. We're 
eight millimeter. Oh shoot, can't find it. I put. I've been working on this. My uh, the other four wheeler, the uh, Craftsman. So I've been working on all kinds of them. <laughs> Let's see. I'm gonna run out here real quick. I think my eight millimeter. There it is. I'll show this. Then I'll get over there where it might get dirty. The fan is not blowing in your ear. This is an old kind of performance trick you can do. And honestly, this is probably not going to do nothing. With this small engine, um, this small amount of horsepower, whatever, it's not going to do anything for it. But um, let's see how well you can see this. You can kind of see where I had grinded it out just a little bit. That way, whenever this gasket sits on there um, and it's all lined up, on the camera it kind of looks like it, it just goes and stops, but it actually flows over and, and there's a, it's rounded over. So you get a little bit better uh, air fuel airflow. But, um, and basically all I did on that was I set that in there and then um, I think I just got a sharp screw and I, uh, I just scratched around the inside of where that was. Of course took this back off, got my little die grinder and uh, cleaned all that up and just, just rounded everything over. Put it all back in there. This, uh, this ear broke off, go figure. So I just uh, put a little super glue on there. It's, uh, I guess the major ceiling point is going to be from here forward. But, and then I also did the same thing on this. It just rounds over and got in there as much as I could. But again, this is more or less for kicks and giggles. Um, not like we're going to be racing this thing or nothing. But uh, now on your, if you're trying to get some extra horsepower on your uh, your bigger engines and stuff, um, this would, this can free up a little bit, and it's you know it's pretty much free. It just costs you a little bit of time, um, and it may give you that. Uh, you have to lift it up for a second. <laughs> and it'll give you a little peace of mind that you did just a little bit extra. All right, got that all set. Uh, so, I guess we're done with that. Come back out here to the uh, KLF 220 or Bayou 220. Did a little bit of research. This is a 92, which, oh, honestly, the plastics aren't for a 92. It's not as bad as I thought it'd be. I was. 12 years old in 92 <laughs> but uh this was bent all the way down but I was able to put a pry bar in right there and I was able to bend it back up now this one on the other hand they hit something hard I mean that I don't know if you can tell that's that's pretty flat <laughs> but they hit something really hard right there but uh and I think that shoved all these plastics backwards, which also bowed this out. Which, um, me just sitting on here, I've caught my leg on that a couple times, so I'll have to fix that. Um, gas gauge, that was broken, but stuck a little duct tape over it, so uh, whenever it rains, it doesn't leak down into, down into there. As you can see, uh, pretty much empty I uh, I'm doing an oil change on it because you guys remember the uh, shifter 
and it broke off. I, uh, I did grind a little bit right here and um, but and whenever I did that it, it didn't make any difference and this thing just broke right off but if you look at it you know I'm all about jimmy rigging stuff you know to, to get you by but dude you could have at least got a bolt that was at least closer to the same size of that if you're gonna try this but yeah, here's a here's the weld they also I, I guess they lost that bolt maybe so they welded that shut <laughs> and then they're like crap that didn't work so we'll just weld the whole thing together. I don't know but um so I'm kind of glad it broke off because it makes it a little bit easier um, for me to get in into that um, grind it cut it off as much as I can um, hopefully I won't mess up that seal too much but I uh, also took this cover off and there's a bunch of water that was standing in there but nothing was rusted nothing you know it was just water every time you'd pull it it kind of uh, splash on you a little bit uh, here's the new parts <laughs> new used parts um, I think I'm trying to remember uh, I didn't spend more than 50 bucks on this. I think it was 44, 45 dollars, something like that. But here's the new shifter. Uh, not too bad. The only thing I don't like is I don't know if you can see this or not, but down inside of this, come on, focus in probably too close and I don't have a macro thing oh well oh you can kind of see it um, just on that side of it those teeth are kind of worn off but I don't know so anyways that's the only that's the only problem that I see uh, we got all this the new shaft um, I looked at I stuck that through the plastic somewhere up here, but anyways, all the uh, all the splines on that look perfect. Um, I am going to go through here and clean that out because that's got a little bit of rust in there. But um, anyway, so I got all these different parts. I don't know. I've never done this stuff before, but um, from what I hear, uh, it, it seems you know, pretty pretty easy uh, to do. So. Starting off by giving it an oil change. Um, I knew whenever I, I was checking the oil, one, this was just hard to get off, but I uh, finally got that off. And then I uh, took this cover plate off, which is this plate. Ta da! It goes down there. There's uh, two 8 millimeter bolts that uh, come right off. And then you had this cartridge type oil filter which oh, guess I need to keep that <laughs> yeah. Yeah, down there like that but um yeah here's the cartridge oil filter and it's a uh, some dirty oil it hadn't been done in quite a while you can tell there's a uh, eight millimeter bolt or I'm sorry an 18 millimeter bolt on the bottom oh let's see if I can show it I think that's it I know it's hard to see sorry <laughs> but uh anyways a uh, 18 18 millimeter bolt pull that out drains the rest of the oil out and uh what I'm going to do, now uh, here's the filter, CH6070, got it from O-O-O-O-Riley's Auto Parts, and then we'll, uh, there we go, I can show you that, 499, 
So five bucks, not bad. I was looking online, you can buy them on eBay for five, six bucks, but I always figure if I, I got it wrong, I can always take it back to them and uh, switch it up. So yeah, um, what else are we gonna, oh, here's the oil. I bought this cheap oil and that's basically just to what I do on all my oil changes is once I have the the plug out I just put a little bit of brand new oil in there just to flush whatever's laying on the bottom um, just flush that out but this is what I'm actually going to use um, in the Kawasaki um, just 10W40 uh, it calls for two quarts so two quarts is what I got uh, I did, uh, let's see. Oh, I had a heck of a time with this. Uh, I need to hurry up. We're at 16 minutes. Good Lord. So I took this off, and this was the last documented uh, service. 11.30.06. And right there it shows 10.40 oil. So should be good there. Um, I did get this to jump over by touching the, uh, what do you call it, the starter solenoid. The, so that's good, but I can't, I still couldn't get the uh, starter button to work or the lights or anything else. So I'm going to wait for that. The cord that goes in through here and releases the latch, see that bar that goes straight across, uh, releases the latch. That cord was frozen. I was soaked it in, in that oil and stuff and it didn't do nothing. But, um, so I gotta get a new one of those. Um, so I think that's where we're at and I'll leave it alone from there for now. But I figured I can go ahead and drain the oil and uh, let it drain for a while. Uh, since I gotta drain the oil anyways because I have to take this whole cover off right here. And hopefully I can take this cover off without having to take this off or whatever. I don't know. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching. Comment, rate. And uh, if you got any tips for me, I know, uh, I think his name is Junkman. Uh, he, uh, I know he works on, on uh, dirt bikes and four-wheelers and stuff like that. And he, he gave me a couple uh, tips, so I appreciate that. Uh, kind of building my confidence on <laughs> on this isn't isn't too bad to do so i appreciate that um y'all have a good one thanks again bye